Hey, I'm back. Um, I just, something I wanted to actually uh, kind of talk about uh, from earlier this week. I noticed that Susan Orman, who is a, I guess, a great um, personal investor or uh, someone who can give you a really good uh, investment advice, but she she's good at personal investments, but not necessarily very good as far as governmental spending because uh, she was i believe on fox and friends or some to it was some kind of um i want to say um republican leaning uh type of a uh, news show uh, a couple days ago um anyway so she she was asked the question if she thinks that the inflation uh that we are currently seeing right now is based on government spending and or it, it was yeah it was some to effect i'm paraphrasing but that, that's why i remember from the, from the question uh proposed to her um she was saying that the fed the the government had spent too much i obviously I disagree with that um mostly because of the fact that a lot of it uh the government spending was through ppp and other programs like that which People like, oh, what the heck is his name? Uh, Mr. Wonderful uh, from Shark Tank got uh, a lot of his companies that he invests in got PPP loans, um, which is uh, forgivable and, you know, you don't have to pay it back, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so let's see. This is according to, I think it's Aura, A-U-R-A dot com. Um, PPP loans from banks and lenders were designed to be forgiven, but committing fraud does not mean anyone can simply siphon current coronavirus aid money into their bank accounts. More than 15% of PPP loans uh, had at least one indication of potential fraud. Around 1.8 million of the PPP's 1. 1. I'm sorry, 11.8 million loans showed signs of fraud, according to academic working paper cited by New York Times. Researchers estimate that $76 billion in PPP loan uh, money was taken uh, illicitly. That's almost 10% of the program's nearly an $800 billion budget. FinTech leaders had the highest rate of suspicious PPP loans. Financial lenders or FinTechs made around 30, 29% of all PPP loans, but accounted for more than half of the suspicious loans to borrowers these numbers are ultimately just estimates for how much money borrowers should have have uh, should not have received the true amount of ppp fraud is likely to never be determined what happens to the ppp loan scammers by taking a fraudulent ppp loan you're defrauding the federal government and the treasury department and you can be sure they aren't taking these offenses likely or lightly, excuse me, the U.S. federal government has cracked down hard on multiple pandemic fraud cases targeting or the programs like the PPP and unemployment insurance or UI programs. Uh, as of March 26, 2021, the Department of Justice have publicly, uh, has publicly charged 474 defendants with criminal offenses based on fraud schemes attempting to obtain over 569 million from the U.S. government and suspected are and unsuspecting individuals, charged and charged an additional 22 individuals in connection with 11 million PPP fraud schemes, sentenced a 46-year-old man to two years in prison for COVID-19 relief fraud scheme. So it's because they weren't targeted. Is because the Money at first, the 1400, I believe, was not targeted to those who actually needed it, but rather it went to everybody. Um, I'm referring to even a higher earning uh, earners as far as the part goes. And that's not the only thing. Let's see, I'll go back. Okay. I'm doing it this way because I figured it'd probably be easier to, this way uh, to, to do it without you know uh, sharing. See another one here is let's see. Uh, where the PPP money went. The, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, enacted as part of the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act, uh, provided small businesses with approximately $800 billion in low interest, uncollateralized uh, loans from April 3rd, 2020 through May 31st, 2021. 
Research and analysis conducted by National Bureau of Economic Research or NBER estimated that the program has preserved two to three million jobs, uh, job years of unemployment, uh, three million job years of, un, uh, of unemployment at a cost of 170,000 to 257,000 per retained job year. Almost all PPP loans are expected to be forgiven with 94% of eligible, 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 there we go, small businesses in the U.S. receiving more or more, uh, one or more loans under the program. Roughly 25% of the loan funds were directly to workers who would be, who would have lost their jobs. The rest, which was 75%, went to business owners, shareholders, creditors, and suppliers of companies receiving loans. Key takeaways here are uh, the analysis of PPP loan that 75% of PPP funds went to business owners, shareholders, creditors, and suppliers, and roughly 25% to workers who would have authorized, uh, otherwise lost their jobs. Marginal uh, propensity to us consume, spend the money, or consumption for the top 75% of the PPP receive, uh, recipients was 0.5%, about half of those workers, which was 1.0%. The high cost, or the 170k to 250 thousand dollar per job saved, was another unfavorable aspect of the program. The speed with which PPP ramped up and distributed funds was a, a bright spot in the analysis. Another fund, oops, uh, excuse me, another plus was the percentage, which is 95, 94 percent of the eligible small business that received the assistance. Most of the negative outcome is blamed on the untargeted nature of the program due to the lack of administrative capacity in the U.S. to administer a program of this type. Ultimately, some per, uh, some percentage of PPP loans of funds that went to businesses reinforced the company's bottom line in the uh, form of windfall profit. 75% to, high, to higher household, uh, higher income households. Uh, uh, Enber found that 75% of PPP funds went on went to the uh, top 20% of households by income. This resulted in marginal propensity to consume for a majority of PPP recipients that was about the same as for uh, recipients of stimulus checks, or 0.5%. But much of these recipients of expanded unemployment benefits 1.0. Okay, so let's see. Important, I'm not gonna read that one. Um, to the extent PPP funds were intended to go to workers who would be likely to spend the money immediately, but the program was less than optimal and market, uh, markedly less effective than expanded unemployment benefits and increasing consumer spending. So in other words, businesses, Higher, uh, higher income uh, uh, companies and others, shareholders, as, as it says, took advantage of the program due to the lack of focus of the um, allocation of those funds. So I'm sorry, but uh, Susan Armand can go somewhere else with her opinion on that because she doesn't know anything what she's talking about. She probably actually was one of them that benefited from the PPP loans. Um, I wouldn't doubt that, whether it be indirectly or directly. The same thing with some of the Shark Tank members. Who knows? Point being is yes, those who criticize the federal fund for the Fed uh, for trying to help out the, you know, the middle income or people who let me show something. Okay. Uh, who needed the money, they ultimately did not get that much money. It was mostly to corporations, shareholders, and other people of that nature. People who would have just held on to the money anyway. And the most of the targeted, no, I think it was 600 to 1200 that they did, uh, I think it was 1200, they did actually shell out. Uh, after that, uh, that is what save the economy then also the uh, extended unemployment and the boost in unemployment benefits people uh, that uh, were saying at the time that uh, too much was being spent were the ones that were the same ones that were getting benefited from the people who were getting too much so just remember that when when you want to when you want the fed to spend more you have to vote in those who aren't attached to any of those industries. 
simply that as far as the part goes. Uh, there was another part. Hold on. Another part of this. Oops. Okay. There. Not that one. Part of not that. Part not that. And let's see. One hundred fifty-eight billion. Let's see. Da, da, da. I think I may have already read this one. I'm not sure. Wait for the on screen. If you like what you're hearing, um, please subscribe to this channel and also check out realprogressives.org. Uh, okay, let's see what's going on with this. And actually, one of the things that uh, she, she was actually on the show uh, to promote was uh, her advice about people. Uh, uh investing in i bonds uh i bonds uh, just so you know what, what they are if you don't know oops go here. uh i bonds are a safe way to guard your money against inflation but what do you uh risk by keeping your money out of the market inflation is up the this by the way this is from nerdwallet.com inflation is up the stock market is down and i bonds have something come into uh big do uh into vague vote or big whatever due to an unprecedented interest uh, rate of 9.62 percent but what i bonds can help protect your savings from inflation that doesn't mean you're that they're right for everyone what is an i bond an i bond also known as a, a serious one sir, uh, savings bonds are a form of bond that earns interest from a variable a semi-annual inflation rate based on changes in the consumer price index for all urban consumers or CPIU and an I bond rates combine two different rates, a fixed rate and an inflation rate. The fixed interest rate remains the same throughout the bond's life. Its inflation rate is, un uh, is announced by the Bureau of Fiscal Service and can change twice a year in May and November. The combination of an I bonds fixed rate and inflation rate creates its composition rate. This is the interest rate and I bond will actually earn currently. I bonds are offering a composite of 9.62%. As its na uh, name suggests, an, an I bond inflation rate is heavily impacted by inflation. As inflation changes, the inflation rate adjusts to offset those changes. This can help protect your money's uh, purchasing power. And while that 9.62% I bond rate is making a splash in the news now, it may change in six months when the new inflation rate is set. You're also required to hold your bond for at least a year before you cash it in. And there are interest rates penalties for cashing in before five years. Uh, are I bonds a good investment? Say you bought $10,000 worth of electronic I bonds in May of 2022, I wish. The maximum amount of electronic I bonds you can buy in one year. Your fixed rate would be zero percent, and your inflation rate would be four point eighty one percent. Your composition uh, composite rate would be a calculated as follows: fixed rate plus two times inflation rate plus fixed rate x uh, times inflation rate, composite rate, or in real numbers, zero plus two times zero point zero four eight one plus. Uh, zero times 0 0.0481 uh, equals 0 0.09620. Hopefully you got that. <laughs> anyway, the, this comp composite composite rate of 9.62% applied to $10,000 in a bond, I bonds would earn a guaranteed $481 uh, in interest over the next six months. But you cannot cash in your bonds until you're you've held it for a year. So. Why even mention the six month take? Because your rate is only guaranteed for six months after that, the rate can go up or down. Assuming interest rates stay the same as they are now, and after adding your the first six months of interest, which is $481 to your principal of 10,000, you can earn a 985 total interest after one year. But if you cash in your bond before you've held it for five years, you'll lose, you'll, you've, you'll lose the last three months of interest you earn. If the rate stays the same, that would mean you'd subtract $252 from your interest and, and exit the bond agreement with your $10,000 of principal and $733 in interest for a total of $10,733 minus uh, any tax owed. Anyway, so that's pretty much what she, that's pretty much what the bottom line she was getting to as far as upward goes. 
otherwise she was wrong on everything else um however biden supposedly is going to uh think about raising the gas tax which in my opinion is the uh excise tax which is 18 percent for any company if any gas company that supposedly is uh bringing it into the country or in state in that case in that case that'd be 18 percent that the, the stores would save in regards to selling said product uh and hopefully uh the consumers would actually save eight, not 80 percent the pump but uh lower than that but it would be a better price either way um and also apparently he's thinking about not selling as much uh, of our gas reserves overseas, which would actually put more uh, gas on our market and, and bring it down the price either the way, which is something that someone like Mike Norman and myself have both been talking about. Him, obviously, in separate, uh, separate occasions. Me, pretty much every time I have a chance to talk about it. Also, uh, he's thinking about taking off some sanctions off, like some in China and Canada and other places like that, that is a tax on us consumers, as far as whether it be, China, uh, you know, pretty much you know, almost any other uh, cons uh, um, commodity we get from China or Canada or any other place that has sanctions put on them that may be lifted. Uh, so hopefully things will actually become less expensive over time. But yeah, the sanctions and tariffs were a horrible idea done by both horrible presidents anyway that's what i got to say as far as the part goes so for those who still uh, criticize mmt that's what is helping me look at this in this direction so uh you could bite my butt <laughs> no uh i'm kidding about that last part anyway uh no i learned mmt that's the only way that i i can translate any of this to my brain Thanks for watching. Peace out for now. Um, and look up Savage Joy on YouTube. She was on, uh, oh, was it Savvy Abby? I can't remember. Uh, but uh, she killed it in a uh, in a Medicare for Medicare for all versus state Medicare uh, for all. Uh, she killed it and buried the guy, as far as I'm concerned. And actually, um, I kind of have a problem with that. I think it's Savvy Abby. I'm not sure if that's her actual name or youtube name but when i went to comment in her comment section uh i was unable to do that even if i subscribed so i'm not sure if it if because i just subscribed it wouldn't let me uh comment or if i had to be paid for subscriber either way i wasn't able to uh comment on that and that part and i'm not i'm not happy with obviously but anyway that's beside the point uh look that up look up savage joy either way um yeah, she killed it last night, and apparently there's going to be a, a recognition of that later on tonight. I think it's 7 o'clock. Uh, I'll be commenting. Um, be there, comment if, you, if you're an mmt -er, or if you're someone who believes in the state-sponsored uh, single-payer uh, health care, then be there as well. That should be an interesting debate. Peace out for now.